Internets, welcome back to another episode of the Premium Pete Show. Finally, <laughs> sitting down with the one and only, okay? It's been a long time coming. You know, we did an IG Live where you yeah. sang me Amazing Grace. I felt very uh, pleasure uh, of, of being able to be sung to like that. Okay, praise and worship. Sunday is every day <laughs> with Terrell Hicks. Um, yes. You might know her as Keisha from that uh, movie called uh, Belly. Yeah, you know what it is. Or, or maybe Jane, okay, from Bronx Tale. Or there's a lot of other things. And she was an artist. So many, listen, I'm so excited to go over your journey to one and yeah. only Terrell Hicks. Welcome to the Premium Peach. Thank you for having me. Well, listen, let's uh, start off. Terrell Hicks was born in the Bronx. Yes. You, uh, mom and dad? Uh, yes, mom, did mom and dad. Do? What did dad do? Mom was, um, she took care of the home, raised children, and dad was a truck driver for Hannah's Meat Company. Mm. Shouts to Hannah's Meat Company. Yeah. You know, when you, when, when you think about a young Terrell Hicks living in the Bronx, I mean, your career has been literally all over the place. Yeah. Um, from an artist um, to an actor um, mm -hmm. to just so many things. When you're living in the Bronx, even as a teenager, as Terrell Hicks, mm -hmm. Did you envision like what this could be? Because the reason I asked you that for is because like even at like 30 years old, I had no idea what the fuck I wanted to do. <laughs> um, would you say it's something that you uh, pursued or would you say it's something that just came to you and then you kind of, you know, really got focused on it? Well, my sisters were in entertainment. And my family, we grew up in church always singing in front of people or – acting um, in off-Broadway. Mama I Want to Sing was a show we started out in. My sisters were on stage before me, obviously. Um, oh. And I ushered in the theater that they were working at. And I think I was about 12 years old. Mm. And I just, I got to see this performance of this play, Mama I Want to Sing, every night. And I would say to myself, you know what? I could do that. I had the talent, I had the voice, and I didn't see myself doing anything else other than entertaining, being on stage, singing, acting, or something in that field. And I was developed in the theater. So someone didn't show up. And at 13 years old, I got the opportunity got shot, yeah. to be on stage. And I never wanted to come off. You know, would you say that is something that that uh like your parents supported you by bringing you there because sometimes i feel like we don't realize how important our parents are if even for even for guys like you know taking them to baseball practice like yeah. these guys turn out to sign 300 million dollar yeah deals you got to say hey thanks pops absolutely you know, thanks mom yeah. you know thanks uncle whatever it is um you know just the support of your family is extremely important you know um I, it's crazy because your journey you know you think about it i actually We'll bounce around, but let's go there. <laughs> How did you get the role as Keisha for Belly? How does that happen? How did I get? Okay, so actually Hype Williams saw me in a Bronx tell and he started putting me in a bunch of music videos just because of my look, the natural, you know, kind of no makeup girl representing the brown tone mm -hmm, mm -hmm. women. And um, from that point, he went into from directing videos to making movies and he said, I have the perfect role for you. So he pretty much just handed it over. And I looked at it and I was like, okay, this character is so opposite from Jane. Uh, I don't know if I could pull this off. And he's like, come on, Hicks. You was raised in the projects. You can pull her <laughs> off. She's every chick you ever grew up around. So I thought about that and I was like, you know what? You right, read for it. And he was like, perfect. So then he's just started matching up who would be the guy and X came over to the house. We did a read. Um, and he was like, that, that's it. I mean, what, it. I that's mean, he walks, in, he walks into the house. What is it? Hello. You know, is it, you know? <laughs> the Yo. funny thing is I just saw an interview with him and I never knew that he felt this way, but he said he was actually intimidated by my presence because he had seen a Bronx tale and was like, okay, this girl knows what she's doing. And I'm new to this. I don't really know what I'm doing. So he's like, everybody's in the house acting like they're not celebrities, you know, just regular. And he's like that. It blew him away. So. I mean, I mean, shouts to X. X is, yeah. uh, it's a you character. know, forever classic, <laughs> man. I mean, I remember, he I remember, I remember hearing stories in hot 97. I love her talking yeah. about like this guy come up to hot 97 with three dogs 
um, you know, just yes. uh, drinking Hennessy at eight in the morning, you know, and cool um, and Bible scriptures. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, we don't get through, you know. Yes. Um, but but um, you know, when you think about it, it 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 was first of all, shouts to Height Williams. Just yeah. just alone, I remember seeing you in that purple. Uh, uh, the way he did that, how Nas came through. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But I mean, even there was a point where you were in that color. Um, yeah. I mean, just did you? Did you, well, first of all, I sit down with a lot of actors. Sometimes these people don't watch the movies after that. <laughs> did you watch Bronx Tale? Did you watch Belly? I mean, I saw them at the movies at the premiere. I can't honestly say that I sat down after the premieres and just watched it from top to bottom. I think for an artist, once we put something out there, it's kind of like, we don't want to go back and critique everything we felt could have been another way. So we leave it. It's a work that's done. It was well received and kudos, you know what I'm saying? So when I saw it at the premiere, I was like, wow, you know, of course the initial shock is that's me on a big screen. This movie is great. I hope it does well. Next project. That's how an actor thinks. We're, we're on to the next yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, you're ready. It's a business. Yes. You know, you, and shouts to Lilo. Um, yes, you know, I absolutely. Me- I, I remember him um, telling me as I was just telling you mm-hmm. about how you got the part. Right. And I don't think you heard this before. Um, and 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 he was telling me that they had a lot of jail. First of all, for those who don't know, um, I got to bring Lilo back because we did yes. an episode so many years ago. I didn't even do it with video. But anyway, Lilo was telling a story about how originally it was an older guy casting as Cologinal. Mm-hmm. So they had older woman. Yes, Naomi um, Campbell, actually. Yeah, 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 which is crazy. She was casted. Which mm-hmm. is crazy. And then when they decided they weren't going with this guy and they used uh, 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 Lilo Brancato. Mm-hmm. Who um, they found on the beach. Who they found playing. on the, Jones Beach, <laughs> uh, uh, um, which is very weird. And they went yes. reading in Silver Cup Studios that night. Exactly. Um, his brother, he was in the water. His brother says, oh, he looks like Robert De Niro. Mm-hmm. I got to show you my brother. Come here. Imagine a guy walking around on a beach like casting for the Bronx Tale. What yeah. the fuck are we talking about? I grew up in Coney Island. All you heard on the beach was like, cold bear hair, pretzel, ice pop. You never heard like, I'm casting for Bronx Tale. Right. Um, and then he told me that you come and 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 when they do that part, for those who know, that say, what's your name? And he says, Cologen on you. He says, Kahu. <laughs> and I guess they, you, you had moved on and, and, yeah. and, you know, meaning went to another room and Robert De Niro turned to Lilo and says, what'd you think? He said, oh, man, she was amazing. And I never just by that. that kahoo was that. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of Lilo. L- listen, I'm proud that you always stuck by him. And yeah. I want to say meaning in support of in the sense of just like that he could come back and try to Absolutely. be the best version of himself. And and he's never gave up. He's never, you know, he's still in recovery. Uh, and, yes. and, 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 and I'm proud of him. And I'll be honest with you, pop culture is proud of him. And what mm-hmm. I mean by that is uh, later on, which is probably like a year or two ago. Remember you took that picture with him again and it surfaced on yes, the internet? Yes, yes. We it were doing an autograph It goes to show you how much show. people care about yeah. Cologenal and Jane. Together, yeah. Years later. Yeah. You know, how, how, I don't think people understand this. It's not only acting, but sometimes you get a shot. Like a Bronx Tale was your shot. Yes. It's like, even if they paid you, say, $20,000, you would have gave them $20,000. Yeah. Because it springboarded everything else i mean when you look back at bronx tale i mean as such a young actor mm-hmm. you know uh was that uh discouraging or nervousness or or because to be honest with you and i'm not just saying this i'm not an ass kisser but you crushed that role <laughs> thank you the way you touched his hat thank you the way you handled the brother the way you handled him the way you were on you. the bus you know we, i know you said you grew up in theater but were you going to acting classes were i you? was not I mean, all my experience literally came from the Hexer Theater and just being on stage and church plays and, you know, just being comfortable in front of an audience, in front of people. So, and because I was like so deep in church, we didn't watch a lot of TV. So Mm -hmm. I like to tell people, and I'm a little embarrassed to tell people that I really did not know who Robert De Niro was. And I think that's why I got the part. Mm -hmm. I wasn't intimidated by Anyone's yeah, yeah, oh my God, this is Rob. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> yeah. God, like, 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 so, like saying, oh my God, this is Robert right. De Niro. All of the girls that I was auditioning, they was like, Bob's in the room. Oh my God, he's in there. And I'm like, Bob, 
oh, he has another name? Like, yeah, oh, they, they, call they, him, yeah, they call yeah, him they call Bob? Bob oh, yeah. okay. So when I got in there, the only thing I would just say, okay, God, don't let me trip over any words. Um, let me just, you know, have a perfect performance because this is what I want to do in my life. And I just kept going back to those auditions, more confident and just, you know, wanting to nail that part. And Well, you did. You did. And it was the start of your career, yes. uh, which we'll continue to get to. But one thing that was powerful about Bronx Tale, too, was it, it really gave a, a, a inner look of the, 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 the height of racism, the height of, mm-hmm. uh, the height of neighborhoods. Uh, actually, we're just realizing or not realizing – uh, that it's still happening today, but mm-hmm. uh, which is fucking crazy. Crazy. Um, but um, anyway, it. I think for me as an Italian growing up in Brooklyn, it was powerful because it was mm-hmm. powerful. Um, it was powerful to date outside your race because it wasn't a thing. Right. It was powerful to break these chains. It was, you know, I, I, I want to be honest with you. It's crazy to say this because I'm a little bit older probably than you and uh, 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 Lilo, mm-hmm. but very inspiring to me. Um, you know, my daughter's mother's from Trinidad, um, nice. being an Italian that just changed, you know, didn't, and, and, and not that there's nothing wrong with it, but I didn't name my kids Angelo or Mario, you know, right. um, you know, I didn't date Italian woman and nothing wrong. I, you know, there's some beautiful Italian woman. I just really stepped outside and, and, and I don't want to be told it wasn't a thing, right? If you felt like you like someone, it didn't matter what color, uh, uh, you know, your skin was. And I'll be honest with you, uh, um, a Bronx tale wasn't a movie to me. It was a life lesson. Exactly. It had a lot of gems in there. I mean, yeah. even when Sonny, uh, Chaz Palminteri says, he owes you $20, he's never going to bother you again. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are like, give me my fucking $20 now before I break your head, not realizing, mm-hmm. like, yo, take that fucking trial, but don't, you're never going to ask me for anything ever again. You know, it's also like the working man and the tough guy. But anyway, who gives a shit uh, about my only personal things? <laughs> we, we speak about Bronx Tale. How did you know when you got the part? How did I know? I never really knew. I just kept getting callbacks and I was sick of the callbacks. Um, I was at like 14 and I was close to thinking maybe I had the role because they were giving me specific instructions. Don't go outside and play too much because... Bob is in love with her skin tone. We don't want her to get any dark, any light. It's perfect for lighting. So really? stuff like that. Um, Which is still the, perfect, yeah, by the way. Black like, don't crack, internet. Thank you. So I'm like, if I'm staying in all summer, they better give me this part. Like, you know, I'm sacrificing my my childhood, my outdoor playtime to, you know, hang on the block with my friends. Not going roller skating because back then the rink was the yeah, thing yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah. You know, we would go skating a lot and they were like, no, 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 no. Don't do anything where you may break an ankle or, you know, just be out of work. Something that'll sit you down. You know, when you think about like, um, how did you know what like... Like what? Did they just tell you what you were gonna get? Like, did you have an agent? Like, you're so young. Like, how did you I know? I didn't have an if, agent. If they say, "Look, we'll give you ten thousand dollars," how did no. you know if it was good? I didn't have an agent. I didn't know if it was good. <laughs> um, but what I I had video music box. And, Shouts to Ralph McDaniel. Right, Ralph McDaniel shouted it out, and he said, "Hey, they looking for someone for this movie. Got to be an African American girl. Blah 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 blah." And so I went down off the strength of that, and my sister telling me about the audition. Then I saw him rerun it because they were still looking. They had had a round of auditions already and they didn't find anybody. So I was like, all right, I'm going. That's it. When I got there, it was every nationality on the line. And I was like, well, I thought it was just for African-American girls. But okay, whatever. It was the I'm United Nations. I'm like, right. It was the United Nations. Like, I'm going in anyway. And like I said, all the way to 14, to that time when I got the phone call that said, okay, Terrell's cast it, then... Oh, it was it, it was on. Con, I'm like, con, I'm going to be in a movie. Yeah. Because that 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 spiraled uh, your career. Now, now, um, um, did you being somebody who's so young, how old were you? I was 17. You know, now you get money. Yeah. You know, do you what did you do with the first thing with this Bronx Tale money? OK, so new new Ava Rex jacket. Three X <laughs> no. for hubby over there. <laughs> Pelly, Pelly. I knew hubby, but we weren't married. Okay. We've known each other. We'll get to that. But yeah, yeah. we've known each other since we were like 15, 16. Mm-hmm. But um, what happened was basically I was already making money as a teen because remember, I worked in the theater. That's a different kind of pay. I'm only working on the weekends and I'm making like $300 at a theater on the weekends. And my mom, my mom was like a go-getter. So she would like sell candy in between. She's banging out five, six hundred dollars a weekend. She hit me off. So the money, my sisters were touring. So money 
was there. That wasn't like the big issue. But let me tell you when I knew the difference. I knew the difference after Bronx Tell because my day's work was the same amount as my father's two week check. Holy <laughs> so shit. I was like, wow. Yeah, I'm never getting out of this business. This is it for me. And we were in the process of moving from the projects to Jersey. So it was a very transitional um, period in my life where, you know, we were leaving old things behind and moving on up in the world. And it all happened together. It you felt know, good. You know, as as you land this spot as Jane in Bronx Tale and you crush it, um, you know, now you start to get these other roles. We just spoke about Keisha, mm -hmm. which was an incredible role, which is, you know, now I know you said it's totally different. Were you ever mm -hmm. like, kind of like, this is too raunchy for me? Did you ever well, feel that way? I mean, I, I did. I'm, I mean, I wasn't a, a cusser or anything. I really had to pull her out of me. And then, you know, there is um, a, a scene in there, which I had nothing to do with. <laughs> so that was a double. And a lot of people don't know that, that I what never scene, did. What scene was that? that? That was the intimate scene with X and Keisha. Okay. Um, you only see me when we hug and he throws her to the floor from there. I'm like out of it until they get her back in the bed in the sheet. So that was like some stripper came in with a wig. See, see my part. that's the reason why you didn't know that. That's why your husband married you because, <laughs> yes. you know, uh, he, he said, hey, listen, you know, uh, um, X didn't have this, so no, I'm good. You X, know? Did, X never got that. Nah. <laughs> never. He said, what you mean? Um, You're funny. You know, you think about this, this is a cultural 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 uh parts but now you're more now you're more uh savvy mm -hmm. so i'm sure now did you have an agent at that time when you went into uh uh, uh keisha i did have an agent there. yeah yes. so, so you wind up making more money yes absolutely okay. and then absolutely. and so, so it's, it's kind of you yeah. get you you have different things going on you have to you know make sure you're getting your proper points and that your residuals yep, yep, yep. actually come into you and not over there so yeah, with, at some with, point you with, do need with, an agent. With Bronx Tale, how was Chaz with you? Chaz was amazing. I always say, for me, he was the best acting coach of my life. He guided me through every scene because remember, he wrote all those parts. So he knew exactly what he wanted out of Jane. And whenever he would relay something to me, do this, do that. Um, I was just able to take his vision and bring it to life. And for him, I became the perfect Jane. And for that, I'm, I'm grateful that I was able to, you know, own up to yeah. what he was expecting, I'm, his expectations of his character. I mean, shouts to Chaz. That was yes. an incredibly written movie. Shout um, and then Chaz. we think about, you know, Keisha and Belly. And then let's keep on going. All of a sudden, this girl, Terrell Hicks, decides, hey, you know, I mean, she always has been, but you become an artist. And yes. what I mean by that is literally, I don't know, again, I feel like there are some people who may not know that you know, um, you're an artist. You had you, you had some some big songs. There's a couple of big songs, yeah. um, even with Missy Elliott. Yes. Uh, who else? Name, name down who else is Missy songs Elliott. Did. I worked with Chad yep. before. Yep. You know, he became a part of the Neptunes. He did yep. a song called "How Can I Get Over You." What, what song was it with Missy? Missy was "Ooh Ooh Baby." Yep, yep. Um, How did she that go? She was actually the debut release. Um, it went pretty well. It it did peak on a Billboard, but then they just Motown decided they wanted to go a different direction, so they put out the um, Denise Williams "Silly." They yes, they yes. felt like "Ooh Ooh" was a little too pop. How did the hook go on "Ooh Ooh"? Ooh Ooh Baby Baby. I think you'd be the one for me. Ooh Ooh Baby Baby. Boy, you gotta be the one. Yep. Mo Motown. How do you sign a Motown? So I had a deal with Epic first. And De Niro actually got me that deal with Tommy Matola. Shouts to De Niro. Yes, shouts to De Niro. And um, so I was there for a while, but you know how these companies do? They change all the people and they come in with other people. And then um, an a and by the name of Dice, um, shout outs to Dice Rand Danny. He discovered me at uh, Wilson's, Chaz and Wilson's. Do you know about them? Yes. Old school. We told, we going, well, we going back to the 90s. So he discovered me with Ron Grant and friends mm -hmm. at Chaz and Wilson's. And um, he asked me what was going on. I said, well, I'm kind of over here at Epic. I can't really sign with anybody else. He's like, nah, nah, nah. We're going to buy you out of that deal. They haven't put you out yet. We're going to buy you. So basically Andre brought me from Sony. The late, great Andre Harrell. Yes. Rest in peace. Brought me from Sony. Um, signed me. Dice was my A&R. And we got to making that album and put it out. And... Can I ask you, if you're an 
actor mm-hmm. and then you jump into the music business, mm-hmm. would you say these people admired you and respected you because you had a multi different career? Like meaning like they, they know you could blow, like you you, you got pipes and, 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 and you sound, you're an amazing singer, right? Um, mm-hmm. But did being in the Bronx Tale and being all these things kind of give you that, I guess, weird I'm not my word to use, but I guess I'm gonna throw a clout yes. to these people. Like kind of like it, you know, it helped yeah. because I was already popular, and now it's easy to get a deal because I've done this. You know, that's just that's how this industry works. You know, when you do one thing, it opens the door for something else. So um, that definitely opened up the doors. As soon as I did a Bronx Tale, I was actually supposed to be on a soundtrack for Bronx Tale, but we couldn't quite find the right song. So that song. Or me getting on that soundtrack led to De Niro talking to Tommy about me and saying, no, you need to sign this girl. She has a voice. And then that led to my Motown deal. But singing has always been my first passion. Mm. And although the acting happened first and I've been very successful at it, I'll always be a singer at heart because that's the thing I know God gave me for sure. Yeah, you know, yeah. that came out of me at seven, eight before I knew what acting was. So, you know, I'll always try to pursue that or even just do it for myself. Yeah, that was, that, that was, that was powerful for you. And I think yeah. it, 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 it kind of catapulted you to, you know, the all the entertainment world and, yes. you know, and give a mixture and then you become like a double, uh, you know, double yeah. entendre, so to speak. Yes. You know, now you're 17 years old, right? Your parents, like, how happy were they that you're in this fucking movie? And then second of all, you're in the Bronx. You're yeah. in like class. Were you still in school as Jane? I was. was I that? was in my last year of high school. And you know, I didn't tell anybody. Um, we were moving from the Bronx to Jersey. And um, I spent half my last half of the year in Teaneck High School. No one knew who I was. Um, and then all of a sudden that summer, a Bronx Tale comes out and all of the kids I went to school with, they're like, oh, my God, you're in a movie? Like, and I went to school with you. And, you know, because it just wasn't the braggy type to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be in a movie and make sure yeah, you guys sure, did. I wasn't yeah. right. I was just quiet. But now they're seeing me out and about in the neighborhood and they're like, you're, you were in a Bronx Tale with yeah, Robert De Niro. Like, you kept your mouth shut for six months and didn't say anything to anybody about that. So it it was cool to um, represent Teaneck in that way, even though Teaneck, I Teaneck, New up, Jersey? Yeah, Teaneck, New Jersey. It was cool to represent them and some of my high school friends that I've gotten close to. But I was always the type of person that I don't want people to like me for what I do. I wanted people to like, like me for who, who I am. Who I was. You know, you, you, you had a lot of different things. You did music and acting and, 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 and you got some checks. Do you remember like the mm-hmm. first time you bought something like special yes, to you? Yes, because we were moving. I was able to help my family pretty much furnish the whole house mm, mm. <laughs> from a Bronx cell because, mm. you know, we we're in this brand new house straight out of Gun Hill Projects. And that all happened at the same time. And that house was like a palace for me and my sister because, you know, I was so proud of my parents for buying their first home and to be able to help them, you know, bring the vision to life. It was amazing. It was, it was great, great memories. So mom and dad, you would say overall were really supportive of you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, for them, I was easy because they had already dealt know, with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, so my were, older were, sister yeah. was signed to Capitol Records. So they, my mom had became all of our managers. So she knew she was, a, the she, she was the original yeah. manager. So she's like, oh, you choosing to do that? Easy. Okay, let's go. And now, she learned her lessons from the others. So, now, you know. Now, now, when when any did you ever watch any of these movies with your parents or or, or like did they ever like kind never of, belly? Yeah, yeah. Nah, I won't watch that with them. <laughs> never. Um, a Bronx told my dad he he catches it. He'll text me every time it comes on. Your movie's on, girl. Yeah. <laughs> like so. Now, what's up with um, Jane? That was all Chaz and 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 Robert De Niro. Like, is that the name they always had, Jane? That's the name they always had. Jane Williams. Well, that's why he says he thought my name would be something, you know, unique or or more exotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't. It was Jane. It was, yeah. You know, there are no African American girls really named Jane. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. That, that in right, itself right. was different. We're Monique's and Renee's yeah, yeah. and Keisha's, and yeah. you know, that's who we are. But hey, listen, Jane, some some parents. I remember hearing a lot of parents like, "Oh, like, yo, I want to make sure this name is good on a yes, resume." Yes, exactly, exactly. So you don't so, try to judge me, motherfuckers. Jane Williams. Um, Although the Williams give it away, but it's all good. You know, we think about Bronx Tale. We think about Belly. Mm-hmm. 
And don't forget, I, I also did Subway Stories, and I have a lot of I fans love that, Subway Stories. that saw Subway Stories, and they, you know, you okay. Would, let's give me, give me Subway Stories. Let's do one at a time. Let's do okay. Bronx Tale, Belly, Subway Stories. Your most memorable moment from each one. Let's start with Bronx Tale first. Okay, Bronx Tale. Mm. Okay, Bronx Tale. I guess people don't know that I really was not driving that car when when she did the big U turn. Oh, that's I had right. a devil because I the could not drive at that. Yeah, I didn't know how to drive. And the fact that it was literally like nine degrees outside and we were in those little jackets. Yeah. We had to keep getting ham warmers and like we were freezing. So to say out lines without going was challenging. <laughs> it was challenging. Talent, talent for sure. Challenging. Moving over to Keisha, belly. Um, belly. <laughs> All, uh, all that oil. I hated that oil. I just want everybody to know, you guys are like, why is she so shiny? I hated the oil, but the oil is infamous today. <laughs> it's legendary. <laughs> it's legendary. But I I fought hype back and forth. Like, why do I have to be greased up like this? I hate, why am I shiny? You thought, you thought you were what? ready to throw hands. And 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 then June Ambrose, she was the- She was the legendary yes, June Merritt fashion stylist. She was the fashion stylist. And she was like, how dare you guys put oil on this ten thousand dollar La Perla uh, lingerie? So it it was we were I was going crazy like I don't want this oil on me. So that will never leave. That's a memory. That's that's, that's forever, sticking. It's as I like to say, forever. forever, forever classic. Now subway stories. Subway stories. Um, that was a role that I just I really felt that role. I was really passionate about singing in the subway. Um, it was not pre-recorded. I was actually singing live mm. in the subway. And for me, I think that role really came from my heart because at that time I had lost a cousin to cancer. Rest I had in peace. lost, yeah, I, I lost a lot of family members during that um time. So that role came so easy and that song was from my heart. You know, you know, it's 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 special when someone gets a chance to uh, you know, follow their heart and especially in you know in the acting career. Um, you know, I look at it like I I I, I just looking at you, I said, holy shit, I I forget to even realize of how many men that you have given the door test uh, uh, thought to. Like, you know, I think about throughout my life, they're like, you know, the door test was considered. You know, I guess the next question for you is, have you ever really did that door test in real life? Even with hubby, a past time, has anybody ever done that to you? Um, I have not. I mean, my husband's a gentleman. He opens the door for me and puts me in. But you in, realize that's we, like a cultural we, you thing. You know, it changed. By the time we got married, we yeah, had yeah, that's, the that's what automatic. I'm saying. So. People, people say that all the time now. They're like, kind of like, you can't really do the door yeah. test on somebody because it's like, yo, you could press an app and open your doors. Yeah, it but you, So up. that means forever, the legendary door tester, Jane, yes. is here. Thank but you do for, I, uh, I get a lot of stories, though, that it did work on that generation of people that were doing that in that time when that movie came out, and we didn't have that. So, you know, yeah. you, know you, you have an acting career, you have a music career. How hard was that for you to balance that shit? It wasn't because I just love to do it all. I love to do it all. I just hop from one thing to the next and keep it going. And just for me, I just try to put my heart in each project and everything that I'm doing. That's you, it. You know, you ever, you, you ever get to a point in time where you find yourself in another state or country because of what you're doing and realizing how special it is? You Absolutely. Take that moment? Because some people always say, I want to wait till I get there. Listen, you might die. When Lilo and I did the reunion at the autograph signing show, I realized that's when I realized how special a Bronx Tale have been to so many people and that it's decades old. But like you said, um, it's it's really an a, a intimate thing to some people because it applies so many of the life, the life lessons, lessons applies gems, yep. to their lives. And then our representation of the interracial relationships, people at go- At a time, yes. at a time that it wasn't, Really acceptable, yes. yes. People are really dealing with that in real life. So for us, it's like our characters are like posted poster. We we're the posted model for you know their life, their life story. You know, um, first off, I do want to say I want to take this time to I'm I'm so thankful to be sitting down with Terrell Hicks right now, and I also want to give a big shout out to Virtual Cons. Yes, you know another reason why we're here today. Um, and how it's the future 
and uh, of conventions, but more importantly, okay, a game changing app that will have people like Terrell Hicks in there. You think about it. You want a shout out. You want to get an autograph. Maybe some memorabilia or some merch, or maybe and, and it's on all different genres. Whether yes. it be boxing con, Sopranos con, my movie con, and it really is access. You want to learn about, you know, uh, going on the real Bronx tail bus and hanging out with uh, Cologinal and Jane? Yeah. Sign up for virtual cons today. Yep. Okay. Now. Back with Terrell, I will say this. I always ask you uh, to do Amazing Grace, and I feel like an annoying person, but it's only because <laughs> you are, I, I'm, I mean this, and I'll say this in front of your husband, everybody, you are that talented um, to be somebody that could play Keisha. Mm-hmm. I, actually, this is going to become a clip. To be somebody who could play Keisha and Jane, two totally opposite people, and then be able to have pipes that could blow like that um, is just really... I just really admire somebody that that's born talent, you Thank know, you. God-given talent. So, um, and 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 also, it's a very uh, tough time in in this world right now. So we'll give them a little bit of, um, um, you know, amazing, grace. amazing grace. Okay, sure. <laughs> like, sure. I'm like, yo, it, it, it's 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 funny how I, I feel like every time we did it on IG Live, we did it here, internet, the Put legendary, the song. amazing, the talented, Terrell Hicks. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Now, that was beautiful. Thank now, you. let me ask you, um, how important has church been in your life, in your family's life? Forget about like, do you feel like it's kept you together, all of y'all? Absolutely. I mean, God is number one in There's my life. There's also some beautiful woman in church. <laughs> and, 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 oh and, they about, they, 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 listen, after hours, you know oh what I'm saying? God. Yo, yo, I, listen, I was in World Changes. It was some beautiful woman a couple of years ago. I remember them. My man is a regular in World Changes. Shouts to Creflo Dollar. And I remember I turned around and he's like, yo, one of them girls like you. And oh I'm my like, goodness. what do you mean like me? Like, we're like, at the time, it's like. It's some beating grief for singles. Huh? So I turn around and I look and, and you know, I'm like, eh, what? Yeah, did, did, you realize that in church? Well, but- you know what? I, I can't even knock that because church is where I met my husband. mm. mm. And the, the Lord hooked that up. The Lord hooked it up. I looked over. He he was playing the organ, and I was singing, and we instantly connected. It was instantly like, yeah, and, I and, need and to it, know who he is. And for him, it was, I need to know who she is. We had a little meeting after church, and it just never stopped, and we were 16 years old. You know, that's a special thing that you've been with him since that young. But yes. I do want to say this. A lot of people look at an actor, and they just see one thing. Or yes. celebrity or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> I am so proud and happy to see y'all. He comes, I, you know, I watch on Instagram. He comes and supports you in yes. everything you do. He's he also does. a very talented producer. And it's important to uh, for us to see uh, couples do stuff like that. Yes. To um, build each other up, build the empire yes. um, and be there for each other. And really know how to play. Like here's a guy who has done producing for J-Lo mm-hmm. um, and, and a lot of other people. Yep. Genuine. And, and, and it's, you play your part. Like, you know, now he's watching you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. like, I think like, I, I, you know, I, he's I've, a great I've, support. I've been able to do that with a lot of people. Like for instance, some people may know me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm taking the picture for them with other people. Right. Right. I, you know, and I think that it, there's a real chameleon talent in that. But anyway, shout, shout, shout to your husband. Yes. Let's give him his proper name. Okay. Lauren Dawson. Shouts to him. Um, you know, <laughs> as we wind this episode down, because we got to head over to uh, 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 Virtual Cons. 112 is performing tonight. Again, Yay. Internet's Head to Virtual Cons. is available in the uh, App Store mm-hmm. or uh, Google Play or Head to VirtualCons.com. I promise you. I don't just sit here and say bullshit. It's a game-changing app. You want to learn? You want access? You want a chance to learn how to make money? And and really just be able to do and and things that really are not available. If you're if you're a, a movie lover, a pop culture lover, or of anything, head to Virtual Cons right now. Yes. I feel like I gave like two big uh, pushes right there. You did. And um, yeah, as we wind this episode down, listen, Terrell Hicks, um, what's next? Well, I have a string of independents coming out. Um, so just 
look for that, put type my name in, you'll see all the things that I'm involved in. Um, also, I just started my husband and I online store called The Home Team LT. So you can find a lot of my memorabilia on this page. You can purchase our One hoodies. It's The Home Team LNT. So, yeah, go there. You can order your. Um, Limited edition Keisha hoodies. Um, I'm gonna have some Jane, Jane. merch. Yep, and Kahoo. each <laughs> got loads of But um, all of those um, memorabilia pieces will come with um, thank you cards, personally written by me. And because I love you guys so much, and so if you get this stuff anywhere else, guess what? You're not getting that. You're not getting the official. <laughs> You're not tissue. getting the official official, right? So um, I'm excited about that, and. Um, I'm excited about having this interview with you. Thank you so much. Of course. It's been something I've been wanting to do for a while. You know, nice. I, I will say this too. Um, throughout your career, you know, you had highs and lows. Yeah. And what I mean by that is like, you know, some people, I don't look at it like this, but some people do where it's like, oh, she was in Bronx, y'all. She was in this. People always, it's like hip hop. They always look mm -hmm. for current. Right. You know what I mean? And that, that doesn't mean they're outdated or they're right. or, or washed up. But I hate people who do that. So stop, stop doing that shit. It's a marathon internet. <laughs> But, you know, when you think about it, there's times where maybe you're not singing no more, maybe mm -hmm. you're not doing a movie, or you're doing this or waiting to do this. H how discouraging could that be for an actor or for an, for an entrepreneur, for, 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 for a creative? Well, for me, that's when my faith kicks in. If I'm not working at the moment, then I know that that's God over it because there's another assignment for me to do at the time. Um, so the time that I was down, um, I found out maybe six years ago, my mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and dementia. And that was a time, like my mom was my manager. She did everything smart as a whip, um, put everybody in place. And so to see her lose all of those capabilities was heart wrenching. And I had to step back for a minute to help my dad and my family, mm -hmm. you know, my, my, figure my, my, out this, this, this new life. So that that was very discouraging and, and could be depressing at times. But um, one thing I just kept reminding myself is that this is a business that is never going to go away. And as long as you preserve yourself and keep your head on tight, you can always hop back in. Mm. Let me tell you something. I was going to ask you to give advice to some young actors, but that was it. Internets. Uh, make sure you follow Terrell Hicks on Instagram. Make sure you stay tuned to what she's doing. Okay. Yes, and if you if you know of Terrell Hicks, trust me, you're going to learn a little bit more today. But if you yeah. didn't know of her, now you do. And make sure you go back and check out her catalog and check out the music that she did and the movies she does and stay tuned to what she's doing now. Yes. Um, Listen, I could talk to you forever, but you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. We're going to make a part two soon. Okay. Um, but for now, internets, um, the beautiful, the the hustler, straight out the mud, <laughs> sound view projects, no, gun hill projects. Right. Okay. The BX. <laughs> Shouts to Cool Hurt. X. Internets, the one and only Terrell Hicks. Thank you again for having Thank me. You. You're Thank welcome. Kahoo. <laughs>